I am Kenjin. I am the king of Era. Hello, Kenjin. How are you? This is Sabrina. Sabrina. Yes, I know. I've spoken to you before. Um, first, Caroline says hello. Caroline. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, let me ask you about the site to site. Um, s some have um, so having difficulties with the chip, and maybe you can help clear some no, things. No. Um, from, from what I understand at this point, I've gotten many news reports from Grokvik Near about this situation. I do not deal with the governments of your planet. I do not deal with what they have to deal with, and I find it quite offensive in some ways. But they are going about it the right way to establish proper communication with the planet to make peace. That is their goal, making peace with the planet to bring it about change in a peaceful way so they are not being intrusive. Now many would say intrude please, but they cannot to bring about the way that things are supposed to happen. And the chip is something that is being discussed. It is not by far the answer to the question. It is not by far. But it is what your governments have suggested. So therefore, it must be investigated. Do you understand that? Yes. It is not the final answer. It okay. is under investigation. It is under scrutiny by your people, our people, their people, the whole the galaxy of light, the federation of light workers, Elohim, all those involved in the discussions. How can we make this better? How can we come to your planet? How can Grukvik Nir actually bring this about? Because they are the catalyst. They are the genesis of this peacemaking. The first contact people will be from there. Okay. And so we are come together as a, a, a committee, if you will, as a, as a great congress. But your government is difficult to work with because your government and your people do not agree. Yes. Your government, your people, and your religions do not so agree. Yeah. Your government, your people, your religions, and your basic uh, people that are aligning with spirit are sometimes all out of agreement as well. So to make everyone happy is impossible. Yes. And, and, and let me tell you something that you, you may know anyway. And that is, if you do not think that you are being watched already... You are delusional. You are being watched already. Not as closely as a chip would make you being watched, but you are being watched. They know all about you. They know when you go to bed at night and when you wake up in the morning. So if you think that your privacy would be more invaded by a chip, oh yes, it would be somewhat, but they know everything you do. So why is a chip going to be out here? The chip would bring it into a greater pro uh, privacy invasion, yes. Yeah. And I think... So, but, but of course, greater control. They always want greater control, and this is another means by which they see, aha, if we can control site to site, we can also control a greater... We also have a greater vision of what these people are doing, what they're up to and things of that nature. So, yes. No freedom. No freedom, correct. No freedom. So this is like what I said, it's under great scrutiny. Yeah, because um, that is part of the, the challenge because we understand that just by our phones, we're, you know, that's enough for them to do a lot of the watching actually that it's yeah. necessary. I'd let for me them. tell you, 
One of the other things that were suggested were pods, that you would go somewhere in the community and go on a pod and leave from there. And there's absolutely not, because people don't believe in aliens. They would be, like, outraged that, that a pod would be built for people to be sent into space or whatever. How ridiculous. But, and they don't even want people to know that there are aliens to begin with. But we suggested the pods, or I should say Brooke McNear did. It was one of our ideas that it would be public knowledge that you were leaving the Earth to go somewhere. And they, you could tell them whatever you want. You could say, oh, we're just going to California. Right. Um, but uh, the thing is, they, that wasn't acceptable, and we understand why that was not acceptable. But there are many, many ideas in the works, and that one was just foolhardy, because there was no way they were going to accept that from the very uh, mention of it. So, Yeah, because um, some, of, some of the objections that people have are, uh, you know, privacy, privacy, you know, with the family, privacy in the bedroom, and privacy with some ETs that might not want the conversations recorded. Well, I can understand some of those objections. You see, it doesn't matter in the bedroom to me. They already probably watched that. Probably have many <laughs> movies of it anyway. But, um, <laughs> but I can understand personal conversations and things of that nature. But if they wanted to... Uh, to film you in the bedroom, they would do it anyway. So if you're a handsome couple, look out. Um, <laughs> uh, so I am not really concerned about what you do in uh, your bedroom. And I don't and think they're really concerned about what you do in your bedroom, but they do want to hear a conversation. Pillow talk might be something that they might be interested in. Yes. Because, but the, uh, I do not think that they want to know what you're... I think... Some of them are at the highest levels have become asexual anyway, and it's like they would turn that right off. No interest whatsoever. I'm interested in the information, how to become more powerful, get more money, and help my family. Those are the things that these governments are. They're not saying, uh, can you tap into the uh, sexual thing? No, no. No, 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 no. No, no we, we understand that. It's just the comfort level there would be lost. I see. Well, you know, turn yeah. off the screen. Yeah. Yeah. I think that yeah. um but but that's not the the thing the the major thing that I think at least um that I'm concerned about is um the Amatak had mentioned something about being uh, dangerous if they got their hands on the chip. And to me that's a big concern. Um well they would have their hand on the chip because they would be listening to what's going on in the colonies. Now we have, uh, I should say, I, I say I because I am part of Grook Fickner in, many, in many senses. I do run my own planet. Grook Fickner does not run my planet. I do run my planet. However, I am very connected with them as an alliance. I am not actually in it, but I am on the board, so to speak. But um, I say that um, they shut it off. Whenever you are not on the on the colonies, however, can we trust them to do that? Can we trust them to actually shut it off for all people who are not on the colonies? Can we trust that? We would like to be able to. And PG, why don't they have it where they can absorb from the outside instead of having it in our bodies? Because they that's what your your governments want. Your governments want to be able to know where you are. Mm -hmm. And for them to be able to do that, they would have to have the chip. But they can develop other ways yes. to be able to see you on the colony without it. What but they don't think that we know that. Right. So, um, yes. So they want the chip. Mm -hmm. They want to have that great control. Yes. And I do not believe they would always turn it off when, they, when you're not at the colony. I think for some of you they would, but not for all of you. Yep. Yep. And I, I have the awareness of that. Now, could the chip be removed once it's put in? Absolutely. It is okay. a removable chip. It is not permanent. Who does the chipping? 
Which side? We will do the chipping, but it has to be to the specifications. But we have the greater technology, and we we would have to do that. Could it be more energetic, or does it have to be because the the chip has to come from us because of the site to site. Yes. Okay. All right. Because we have the technology for site to site, they have the, the knowledge for site to site, but ours is much more advanced. Yeah. Yes, we want to get there in one piece, as someone said. Yes. So, therefore, there is much discussion yet to happen, and we will keep you abreast of it. But as I say now, it, it looks like it may take a little time because your needs and the government needs and our needs have all have to be met, not just one. Okay. Not all right, that's actually... Be met. They won't just meet your needs, of course. And they won't meet oh, our of course. needs, of course. They must be happy with all... We must all be happy or it cannot happen. And... Everyone said, oh, it will be so wonderful when site to site happens. We did not foresee such problems because there are not such problems in our world with site to site because it is understood what site to site does and it is not a dangerous process and it's not one of spying or in infiltration or world domination or takeover or whatever it is that they expect or we're not even allowed to come there physically to the committees we have to be in astral projection in holographic form even just to speak to your governments so it's 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 uh, primitive silly really <laughs> it's primitive I uh, we are uh, actually it's been discussed that it was it made a negative feeling among many of the species that that's the way that it had to be, but that is the way that it had to be. So, they have so much fear. They have yes. so much fear, yes. So much fear. But we have overcome the negative part of that. So okay. we will do what they ask in the way that they ask us to do it to keep the peace. Yeah, because I understand that everybody's going to have to compromise um, to, to come to an agreement and that, uh, you know, not every you're not going to be able to please everybody. Um, it's like the word compromise to them is a dirty word because they want, it, they want to have all the control. But yeah. they have relented in some ways because they have let us do a few different things to help them and they've taken the weapons away from pointing at us. They let us bring more people to the council. They let us speak to, they let us send representatives in third dimension, liaison teams, very, very small, three people teams to the governments, but as far as a, a conference call, no, not in person, but they sent Nina and they have sent uh, a couple others from different species to in human form to speak to some governments about these very specific things and um, oh it, it the the uh, rumors that flew from these different meetings is quite amazing but uh, they were squelched by us we had to squelch them because they were just untrue so um, that is all I will say about that. Okay, um, and then the other the other um, question was, why not allow us to remember when we go astral? Why why not just why not give there, us that? Well, we have discovered something. Let us under let me uh, explain to you. You have much artificial waves in your in your atmosphere. And we've discovered that a few of those waves, like uh, the waves you get from your cell phone towers, your, the waves you get from telephone poles and wires, and many kinds of man-made waves that are out there. Also, because there are so many 
ships around the planet. We moved them out farther. They were also interfering with the wavelength of your understanding. While you were at the colonies, you remembered everything, but on the way back, you were bombarded with different waves and different... Even your governments sent out a special wave to sort of interfere with that, too. So, um, on top of it, it made it so that some people couldn't remember a thing. If you were in a remote area, sometimes you could remember some things. But those people in city-like places, or places with a lot of wavelengths going on, could not remember anything. Because it was, you, you, cannot, div you cannot filter them out from an astral projection in the sense that you are going through time and space and air and the, the whole thing. You are not... You are not solid, so you will pick up all these different things in your astral projections. However, when you, get, when you finally get to your destination, you will remember it. But at, on the way back, if the government has anything to do with it, they send out a special disruptor, whatever it is that they do, they learn from the reptilians, they send that out. But for some people, it was just the waves of, of all the different... Uh, bad wavelengths that are in the air. I have a question. Yes. Can uh, the, the men in black on the ground, would some of them be assistants on the ground teams to, to work to make sure to make sure there's no interference? They can if that is their mission. We have no control over the men in black. Your governments actually only have some control over the men in black. They are their own agency like your FBI's and CIA's, which have very little supervision on the government, they are they are pretty much on their own. And the and your politicians say, we know what you're doing, but don't tell us, and which is a horrible thing, because many of them have gone to the darker side and some things. So yes, they are run on their own, and they do report to some nations some civilizations on your planet, uh, some political hierarchy, but they are not really told what to do, except they're giving generalities. Take away the aliens that are not doing the right things and are not supposed to be there. Listen to the conversations of those people that we suspect that could be against all humanity. Find Find those people that are not, or find those people and watch them that are doing sight to sight things or astral travel to a, a different cultures and species, you know. And there are just, they have different, definitely different agendas for each of their thing. And some of them are just watchers, some of them just watch. I know some of you have seen them. They come outside your house and sit in a car. And you don't know who they are. Uh, I, can know, I know that uh, there are people here that have seen them. And they said, there's somebody watching me. And I know that they're watching me because they're wherever I go sometimes. And they try not to be seen. But it's not to be feared. Right, it's not to be feared. But, but if you speak to them, they'll say, I have no idea what you're talking about. So, yeah. Um, one last comment on the astral. Now, there are some people that do remember somehow. Can they be studied so yeah. that. We've already done that, yes. And that's okay. what we found when we studied is they're, they're in an area where the, the, the interference is not as much. And that there, there are some people that the government is not. They just don't care to do them yet. They have certain people and certain areas that they want to cover. And if you're not within that area, some people remember quite a bit. Okay. And you know what? They're not the ones that share with you on this site that what, is, what they've seen and what they know because they're just in the background and they've gone to the colonies and they remember and say, I wonder why other people aren't remembering. And um, because I remember this, this, and this, but they're 
quiet and they and they actually don't want the government to know that they went so there you have it so so they have their thoughts intact much of them not everything but much of them okay thank you um, Z hello Kenjin how are hello, you Hansa? how are you I'm okay um, I'm very happy to embrace your energy right now you need <laughs> some you. energy my dear <laughs> thank you um, my question is about the chips uh, if the people agreed to have a chip just because they want to embrace our friends uh, can it be checked by ETs first in the purpose is safety for people that government and what I feel it's more CIA um, cannot um, check their technology because we don't know what is inside of the chip. I you know what I mean? Yes, I understand. You're saying is the CIA going to be able, the FBI, all these different, all these different agencies are, are they also going to have for, uh, your information and uh, access to the chip? And the answer to that is I don't know because mm -hmm. that has not been discussed fully yet. The very idea of the chip is still being discussed. Who is going to be able to have the knowledge is not all clear to us either. And therefore, this, these talks are at the beginning in some senses because we know that the privacy issue is a very big issue with you. Now, we would prefer not to have FBI or CIA, but just those that are scientists have mm -hmm. access to the chip because the scientific community is not as harmful not most of it I shouldn't say they're they're curious loving wonderful people in many ways we would prefer that it be handed over to the scientific community yeah so the first it's need to be checked by ETs yes. what kind of chip is that the, the technology of the chip yeah the chip and will be made by uh, Grok Fichnir, it will probably have an Octorian slash uh, Yuyil technology and it will be um, for site to site, that's why they must make it because the site to site has to be perfect. With the absolute spiritual component to it also. Yes, a, a protective component, yes. yes. But mm -hmm. also with the communication and the, the different things that are necessary. So, yeah. Yeah. So my um, the second question is if the government and our friends, it is, could not come in one decision, is it possible that you, as the king of era, can take people who wish to meet um, anyone from Britain first yes. in your planet? We so we can go there and they can come come in the planet era to meet us. They we are under the same rules and regulations as all the different species. And that is there is no site to site from any of them now. Some of them do it clandestinely. That they do not the government finds them and they will shut them down and put them on probation. They've done that with the dog planet. They've done that with uh, someone from Sirius that took it upon themselves to do some site to site. They took it upon the, the even the Draconians, which are under your planet and off your planet as well. Um, they did site to site to the underground with a couple people and were caught and they were cut off. And they weren't even off planet. They were just to another species. And so this is how much fear your planet has. Oh. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened to her. <laughs> um, Kenjin, I have a question from Slava, and he wants to know if the chip would also uh, read our thoughts. 
It is not designed, it would not be designed to read thought patterns, no. It would be designed to read energy fields. It would be designed to read heart palpitations and things of that nature for health reasons because if you came site to site and there was something medically wrong when you arrived, it would be uh, in tune to that kind of a procedure that they would be able to help you with a medical issue. Not a mental issue, however. That is why before you come site to site, they do a mental evaluation on you. Okay. Alan? Um, Hello. Oh, see, sorry. Are you there? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Let her finish. Enough. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I was got disconnected because my cat just jumped on my laptop. A very healthy activity. <laughs> yes, because I was going to ask you, Kenji, because his name is Kenji, too. Oh. <laughs> So I was suspicious, I was like, oh, is there something between you, energy between my was cat and you? Was he named Ken Jean before they knew of me? Uh, no. Ah. So when he I was bought after me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yes, well, I will have a connection with him for now, for sure. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, and he heard that, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, yes he did. <laughs> I saw that reaction. It was like, what? Um, <laughs> yes. I understood, yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Alan. Hello there. Continue. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, just a quick question um, regarding religion and the chip. Is it because religion is against it because they think it's the mark of the beast? That could be one uh, understanding of it to certain people. Now, if you're Buddhist, no, it wouldn't be the mark of the beast. It would be um, that they don't believe in aliens and they're, they're growing in peace and find that that is would be a disturbance. But there are Buddhists that do believe in aliens and things of that nature. You're, but you're right, the Christian population is the yeah. ones that would be most vehement against it. They would be most big, vehement. And that's a big group, isn't it? It is a very large group, yes. Yeah. Now, Islam would tend to ignore it to some extent, except those that are radical, that believe that they anyone outside of their belief are infidels. Now, those who believe that everyone else is an infidel will be definitely not wanting aliens to be part of that. They would be infidels as well. Okay, thank you. There are other other different circumstances that would not be accepted by many different religions and for different reasons. But you're right. Isn't this, isn't this causing a big problem, though? It would be a problem, yes. Yeah. That's but shame, you know it? what? It, it, unfortunately, it is going to happen, and they're going to have to change how they believe in some ways. They do not have to stop believing in a Christ figure. They do not have to stop that. because yeah. they're, But they do have to include others. And there are some species that might want to become Christian in, for some reason. It, it is what it is. Exactly. Okay, thank you for that insight. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Sandy? Brian? Hi, I'm Brian. Okay. What is water to you and your planet and to the universe? Water is life, of course, but our life, we, every planet has a different form of water. Water is heavy. Water is light. 
Water is like it is on your planet, just H2O. But on other planets, it has much more me metals to it, or it has much more elemental understanding to it. Some species are sulfuric in nature and their water is much more so pure. Some are carbon based like yourself, silicon based, you know, different things. So their water is slightly different for them to evolve in an atmosphere where that is the main substance. That is the main creative substance. So the creative substance also is in the water. Beings cannot survive without some form of liquid in their system, blood, whatever. There are some silicon beings that have very little liquid in their system, but as and such as the uh, insectoids, there's still liquid in their system, but they have exoskeletons and much the density, the, the place where they have most circulation is in the brain. That is where their circulation is. And it does not come down into the body all that much. It's a very thin circulation system throughout the body. It is necessary, but it's not like yours that's very plentiful all to the edge of your skin. Theirs is more mental. Their circulation goes through the body in a very small way because they need to movement and things of that nature and they do need the brain to send messages to the body but they their most circulations in the brain and that does need a, a liquid a chemical yes so that water is life water is many things it's creation actually in many senses and it, it I could go on and on about water, but I'm not sure what you're actually basically asking, except that water to me symbolizes life in the universe. You, you answered my question. I was asking your relationship to water to learn from your paradigm of how you interact with water. And yes. Hearing creation and life is a, exactly what I was asking. Ah then you, that is exactly what I'm saying. So, um, but it has many other dimensions, water does, because you, it moves into steam, it's, 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 uh, it interacts with many different chemicals in many different ways. The forms. The, the forms, yes, it changes. And it can be heavy or very light. There are some places where the water is even lighter than earth water, in the sense that it, it moves in a very mist, misty way. And it's considered water, but it's actually more like a mist. You're welcome. Uh, it is time for me to go. Um, I have got to go. I, there is a meeting that I must go to. Yes. Sandy. Oh, Sandy. Hi, this is Sandy. I had a question for all. Actually, a statement. Yes. I realize how powerful creators we human beings are. Yes, you are very powerful, yes. Um, and that seems to be the biggest problem we're having is our government. Yes. Um, I'm wondering what the possibility of us dematerializing or, or changing our government through our manifestation process, Cause, yes, um, maybe bringing more light to it, or changing the people or the beings that are there. Correct. And so that they are more attuned to love and peace yes. as we are. Acceptance. Accept. All right. Let me let me address that. The more people that have that frame of mind that come into that understanding that that can happen, that believe that this is the way that you should move the more greater possibility for it to happen. You cannot do it all by yourself. You need, to, you need to have the understanding, the connection, the, the wavelength of those around you that believe that you can do this and be with you. Now, if you say, how many do I need? I don't know, because that is up to your belief systems. If you believe that you need 40, 
or a hundred or two thousand. You see, some people their belief systems are smaller than others. So you may get them to believe what you believe, but they won't believe that just 50 will be able to do it. They won't believe that just 100. But you see, just 100 or just 50 could do it. What if I believe I myself can manifest my world with a wonderful government that I, I love, and I love all their actions, You're right. and, and they are supporting this? You, are, you can manifest that. But you have to realize that you're living in a third dimensional state. You were born into third dimension and all the things around you will not be seen by you in that dimension. Now, you will just simply disappear from the face of the earth because that would just change who you are completely and you would not be in third dimension any longer. Unless you wanted to connect to the people around you which are not in the same state that you're in, do you understand? You would have to be in the same state with them, third dimension, to be able to communicate with them. You can create your own government because what will happen is this. You will create your thought pattern and you will go to the world which is closest to that dimensional thought pattern. You will not be part of Earth anymore. You will simply disappear. You will not be part of this third dimension. Now, it is possible to do that. I do not know of any Earthling, except for maybe two in the past, that were able to create their own dimension and live in it and go to another place. But it has happened on Earth, but your belief system has to be pure, completely pure, and completely, you have to get rid of every shadow energy. And that is difficult for humans to do. Because to enter into the next dimension in a full awareness, a full awareness, I understand that. You can enter into another dimension without full awareness, with the shadow energies and things like that. But to enter in with full awareness, there can be no shadow. But it you will develop shadow energies in the new one. Oh, okay. But they're not as strong. Okay. Because you the reason for this is that any place that you go, any place that you go, any place, any dimension has some shadow energy and it has to be there to hold things together. Just like dark matter is there to hold the universe together and, and gravity and things of that nature that you cannot see that are that are there and they can be seen in good or bad ways. You can even see your shadow energies in a positive way that they actually help me to see the, the greatest part of my goodness. They actually help you. You need some shadow to, so that you can appreciate the light, that you can appreciate the goodness. So you have to rid yourself of that during that transition period. And then when you come to that place, you will immediately gain whatever shadow energy they have so that you can appreciate being in that dimension. Even when we cross into spirit, then we'll have shadows as well? No, you will not have shadow energies in spirit. Okay. That is a totally different... Um, we could spend a little more time on yeah, that. Okay. So, <laughs> But no, but we're talking dimensions here. Okay. We're talking dimensions, we're talking... Uh, physicalities, uh, densities, if you will, um, but that is something different entirely. Whereas you're, you do not have to experience um, shadow energies unless you call them. So, because you have free will even in the afterlife to call on anything that you want. You have that free will. And so if you need a more appreciation of the afterlife, which I can't imagine, but you can call on that if you want and go to somewhere where the, you can experience something and remember. We so appreciate you visiting. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is time for me to go. I have a meeting thank soon. You. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Ah, I have not been called that for a while. <laughs>
Well, thank you, Kenji. Thank you have a different okay. word for me on the planet. It's not a bad word, but it's a good a description of uh, the one in power or the power one or the one with energy or whatever you want to call it. But um, I don't use it much because when you when you're taking care of a people, you must connect with them in order to be a good leader. You must know what they are feeling as a whole to be able to meet their needs. Now, you won't meet everybody's needs just as you won't make everyone happy. However, the greatest needs of the people are what I take care of. So, to call me something greater is not necessary. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming, Kanjin, and answering some of our questions about the site to site. I think that will be helpful to a lot of people. Oh, you are so welcome. There is one Come more. Again. Yes. Come on. Who said what? Ah, Namaste. Said come again. Ah, hi Namaste. Yes. Namaste. Welcome, Kanjin. I haven't spoken to you today. This is know-how. Hello. How are you? Hello, dear one. May I ask a question, a final one, before you leave? Because I had got the chance. Yes. Thank you very much. Regarding the chip again, uh, what happened is I was thinking about it, but you said the, pri about the privacy part is really, really concern, it's concerning us. We have the will to go, and we have decided to go. But the privacy part is a very important part, like the rest, using the restroom, you know, the intimate matters, all the stuff that do matter for us. If it's yeah, go or do something about it, then or neg still negotiate about it, that will do. We are trying to discuss a way around the very personal private issues. Exactly. We understand humanity, especially, has issues with privacy. There are some species that have no issues with privacy, and therefore that would not be a concern. However, with your planet, privacy issues are a great matter, and your discussions one with another are a great matter, and your privacy details are a great matter. So we are scrutinizing that to a great degree to make sure that everyone is comp has a part of the answer. Not, not that it will come soon because I'm sure there will be a lot of fight. However, it is not set in stone that a chip is the answer. Thanks and that will do. Take care of yourself and thank you very much. You are quite welcome. Merci beaucoup. And good to see Brian there behind the screen. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. I will move aside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we want you here. here so we love you. Ah, I do not know how to move the body to the right direction. <laughs> Much love, Kenji. Yes. I will leave now. Send yes. love to Aaron. Thank you. Thank you for your interest and attention. Love to the children. Now.